Wisconsin Rapids Community Media with my co-host Carla Lank of North Central Community Action Program here with another episode of Community Business Matters. Uh, today we have a very exciting program dealing with a new business in the Port Edwards community. It's Cyber One Data and we're here, we're honored to have with, with us today our, uh, the CEO of the company, Jamie Michael. I know data center is kind of a concept that uh, when you, we say it to a lot of people, they're like, oh yeah, but I, I kind of, you kind of get that feeling. We understand both words, but we're not <laughs> right. sure about the connection. Right. What, so what is a data center? So yeah, I'm looking, looking forward to our discussion today. Okay. Well, let's start out with a little history of where were you before, where did you come from, and how did, I know that one was in Tampa, Florida, and the other one was in Fort Worth. How in the world did you two get together? So, right, so uh, it's a good question. Um, and we've been asked that uh, by many people here. Uh, so my business partner and I, uh, we used to work together at a, uh, an environmental services company um, a few years ago. And um, Richard Adams is uh, the co-founder Mm -hmm. uh, in our in our in our CIO central uh, or uh, chief information officer, <laughs> and uh, him and I had got together last year about this time, and his um, his family his wife's family actually um, had brought him back here uh, to the area. They uh, they relocated here from Texas. And Richard had uh, previously worked uh, at uh, many different data centers uh, over the course of his career so far, and had kind of always wanted to own a data center, his own. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, and I, the fact that him and I had both worked in the technology aspect um, in our previous jobs, um, him and I started talking about it and really saw some opportunity here. Mm -hmm. uh, we had originally uh, identified a location that was actually built as a data center. And um, that kind of got us going and we started looking at um, a business plan and doing some market research and trying to determine if in fact a data center uh, made sense in the area. So, uh, so we did our we did our homework. Uh, we talked to a lot of people. Um, we put our business plan together. Um, identified a location, and everything really just seemed to come together. And we decided that um, there's definitely a void we can fill here mm -hmm. uh, in terms of being a data center. And uh, so we got started uh, about this time last year, and. Um, went through all of the uh, necessary steps to identify funding, um, identify you know, a, a location, a building, uh, as I said, doing the market research. And uh, we put it all together and been working on it ever since. And we opened our doors basically um, about three or four months ago and uh, have been operating since. Why don't you go into a little more detail about what your what a data center is? Okay. Yeah. The absolutely. services you provide. Absolutely. So, um, so a data center, if you really kind of boil it down, um, a data center is a facility that houses um, servers. Typically, houses servers, and those servers are used to usually run a business. Um, and that business may be um, a number of different industries, right? Um, so in some cases, um, it could be uh, a server is running applications that uh, a business may be running for, say, accounting, right? Um, or, for example, uh, a server that would be housed in a data center could be um, a web host. So that server actually has websites on it, and the person who's managing those websites um, owns that or uses that hardware and basically just protects it in the data center. And so, so at the end of the day, people, people pay and use a data center uh, for a couple different reasons. And one of the primary reasons is the security of it. Okay, so typically it's a, it's a nondescript facility. Um, we have security cameras at all points of entry um, and throughout the data center, the in, inside of the data, data center as well. Um, we also provide um, security in terms of being able to access so physical controls. Um, in our case, we use 
um, biometric entry. So once you're an approved um, customer that you can come in and out of the organ or out in and out of the facility, use biometrics. Uh, they call it two-factor authentication. So we use biometric, and we also use pin codes. So you'd have um, your uh, fingerprint ID, for example. Then you'd also have a four-digit code you you punch in on the door that lets you have access. You've already been screened. We know you're a customer of ours, so that lets you come into the facility and. Uh, sort of do what you need to do in terms of your own equipment or hardware. Um, so that's the security aspect of it. Um, cooling, oftentimes um, a business may have an environment where their servers that they use to run the business may be in a jammed inside of a closet, right? Very classic example, if you go to a small business, they don't have a lot of room um, and may not, in fact, have the proper cooling for, the, for that hardware. So it may be just kind of stuffed into a closet. Um, it gets dirty. Uh, the cooling isn't there. You, you really want to try to keep optimal cooling so that you can extend the life of that hardware. Um, so that's another scenario where uh, you're paying in a data center to have proper cooling, consistent cooling. Um, and then uh, one big factor that um, uh, a lot of companies or organizations may not factor in is fire protection. Hmm. So if you imagine, you know, you had a fire in your building and your servers, your resources may certainly be um, vulnerable to a fire. Um, if, if that happens, you can imagine that could be catastrophic for a small business all your data is on there, plus all the applications you use to run your business. So we have a, um, most data centers do um, have a fire suppression system, but it's not a typical one, right? Because water and electronics don't really go together uh, very well. <laughs> so we have what's called a clean agent fire system. And the clean agent fire system is designed to extinguish a fire, but it does it by removing the heat. And when, when you do that with these new these new clean agent fire systems, were, which are really kind of cool uh, from, a, from a technological perspective, it emits a gas and that gas extinguishes the heat, absorbs the heat, puts out the fire, but it doesn't leave a residue or any kind of contaminant inside your data center. So all the other customers um, uh, hardware is should not be affected by it, right? What so. specifically can you say to those those individuals who don't, they're not big corporate giants or things like that, but sure. uh, what kind of services would you provide for them that, that, that would help them in their in their day-to-day -day business? Okay. We really kind of focus in on uh, four, four core business lines, okay? Um, the first one is called co-location. And co-location is a term that's used to describe the instance where a business might have their own resources, right? They have their own server, or maybe they have a couple different servers uh, in their office that they run their business off of, you know, their accounting program, maybe their human resources program, um, email, you know, all those types of things that, that typical SMBs have. So co-location is a service where we say, all right, you own this stuff, but you want to get it out of your office for whatever reason, because it's too hot, because it's dirty, because um, I'm worried about it um, catching fire, you know, whatever the case might be. Mm -hmm. um, the co-location lets you take those resources, bring it to us at the data center. We put it inside the data center. We give you access to remotely uh, to access that, that server, those servers, and then basically the company would operate um, those servers, but they would just be housed in our data center. And so they get the protection as we talked about earlier, right? The fire protection, uh, the cooling. We also, one thing I didn't mention, a couple things I didn't mention earlier was um, we have multiple internet service providers. Uh, part of being a data center is having redundancies built in. <clears throat> so that, that provides an opportunity to lose one internet service provider for whatever reason but still have another or another uh, and not lose connection to your resources. Wow. So, um, so that's another part of it. Um, and then backup power, right? Mm -hmm. So you have thunderstorms mm -hmm. um, or perhaps you just have, um, for whatever reason, the power cycles at your office, mm -hmm. you lose power. Um, we have redundancies for power. So we have uh, battery backup units that the data center runs from. We also have backup generator. So if we ever lose power, generator automatically kicks on, you don't get any disruptions. Um, we also do what's called dedicated servers. 
And um, dedicated servers is a service where we own the hardware. So in this case, business may decide, I don't want to buy this hardware. I don't want to try to manage it anymore. You know, I just, I'm tired of it. I want to do what I do, right? I want to do HVAC or I want to do manufacturing. I want to do whatever my business is. Um, I just want to know what my fixed costs are every month. And, um, and I don't want to deal with the IT stuff. So in that case, you can use what's called dedicated servers. Um, and the customer would say, all right, well, I'm gonna rent this one. So we provide the servers, we own them, we provide them. And basically the company just rents them. That's really what they're doing. So they're using the data center, but they're also renting those servers from us. Mm -hmm. And you know they have a fixed cost every month. So they know they're gonna be paying $300 a month every month, you know, CFOs really like that part of it. Um, they know how much they're paying every month. Predictable. It's predi yeah, it's predictable, <laughs> it's fixed. Um, and they also don't have the headaches, right? If something happens with that server, it's on us to get that thing repaired. So you would sell that as in, in search for, for, a, for a company or a financial officer, you would say this allows your people to concentrate on the big picture things that things that really matter to your company in terms of making money and let us handle this this yeah. detail that yeah that you might not want to yeah expend a lot of time and effort on absolutely um one of the things that um one of the things that i i typically talk about is um if you're trying to grow your business right um there's opportunity there to take some of those basic headaches away from your it folks and let them focus on um, you know, building an IT roadmap or mm -hmm. focusing on a project instead of dealing with these, um, some of these little things that tend to pop up and they always do and they always will. Um, but it gives them the opportunity to kind of maybe focus on some other stuff that's going to be help, helping a business maybe drive revenue, mm -hmm. right? So they become more of an asset to their, to their company than just sitting in the back um, kind of fixing stuff and mm -hmm. dealing with those with, with the minutiae, right. as I say. So, so that's a good point. Yeah, that, that's definitely something to consider for them. Yeah. And then there are two other areas that, uh, of concentration. Yes. Yes. So two more business lines, I call them. Um, they're what we call VPS or virtual private servers. Um, and basically virtualization is just um, it's a technology that allows um, it allows you to take a, a server and instead of having a physical server that things are running on, your applications, right, or email or whatever it is, um, it virtualizes that server. So it turns it into a software-based server hmm. instead of a hardware-based server. Um, now these, these virtual private servers, they all exist on a physical box. But what you do is there's some um, software out there that lets you convert this physical box and you can run multiple servers on the physical box. Mm. So that's how you get the virtual servers, right? Okay. So you can have a, in the old days, right, you'd have one server, you'd have an operating system on it and you could put whatever you could put on there and, uh, and you'd run everything off that physical box. Uh, in terms of virtual, virtualizing um, a server, now you've got a, um, a physical box, but you've got a software layer on top that lets you uh, carve those resources, right? The RAM, um, the storage, the processing power, it lets you divide that up and create virtual servers, and then you can use it in a what they call a multi-tenant environment, mm -hmm. right? So I could have one big powerful box, I've got 10 virtual servers on it, and I could have a couple different customers um, running their, uh, or using it for whatever their needs are, but now I've brought that, co that cost down. Mm -hmm. So whereas if that customer wanted to pay, say $100 a month for that, for that server, for that physical server normally, well, if, they, if the circumstances fit for them, I could give them that virtual server for twenty dollars a month. Mm -hmm. oh, wow, mm -hmm. that's quite so a saving. It's a it's a good savings. Yeah, in the right application, virtual servers make a lot of sense. And then the last one um, is backup and disaster recovery. And <clears throat> this is a really important topic for for small businesses uh, because I think that while lots of small businesses have taken the steps um, to backup their information. Um, 
One, I think there could be the data center um, and some of the solutions that are out there give them an opportunity to, to do it better. Throwing backups for your business data on a flash drive mm -hmm. that you could easily lose, <laughs> right? Or smash or whatever the case yeah. might be, right? Or you take it and you put it on an external hard drive and then you bring it back to your house, you know, there's, and, and those are, I mean, those are okay. I mean, those are ways of doing it. Um, they're inexpensive, you know, and uh, for, for a lot of small businesses, it, it, um, it, it might be okay, it might suffice, but, um, but uh, solutions have become much more affordable now. Um, and so there's other ways to, to go about doing it that, that are probably make more sense um, and are more secure. Yeah, the minute you talk about uh is, is a disaster backup, is that how you refer to it? So we call it, there's a term in the IT industry called BCDR, right? And BCDR stands for Business Continuity and Disaster Recovery. So the business continuity aspect of it is takes, uh, takes your, your data and it goes beyond just backups. I, the best way to, to me, I think, to explain it to businesses is, it's great to have all your data backed up somewhere, right? So you're a small business, you're running your production environment at your office, and you've, you're using some service and you've got all your data, important data backed up somewhere. Well, what happens if your office gets flooded mm -hmm. and your servers are now dead, you mm -hmm. can't revive, right? You have to have a place to put that data, to go retrieve that data, you've been backing up and you have to put it somewhere. So that's where the business continuity aspect comes in and the disaster recovery. So it takes back takes backing up information to another level. And so what companies do is they invest in technologies um, and resources that allow a business to not only back up their data, but also have, for example, a, a server that's set aside and it's ready. It's ready to go. It's got the information, and now you can you can launch, right? Let's say your business is hit with a fire uh, or a flood. Well, conceivably, you could be up the next day or a couple days later, operating temporarily because you have those you have that planning in place and you have those resources. In fact, I would encourage. Um, small businesses to just go out on, on Google, just research it, look up BCDR, um, just understand it a little bit better. Uh, because you are, you have established this this very impressive operation within this local community, and I, I, with some, a couple of my colleagues, we took a tour of, your, of the facility, right. and I can tell our audience that it is a very an impressive facility. Uh, Carla has worked with a lot of these, a lot of startups here right. in terms of financing and things of that nature. I'm sure you have some questions about uh, for Jamie re regarding exactly how do you get an operation like this off the ground and yeah. go on. So who who was the first person you talked to? Well, that sent um, you to all the other places. Well, actually, um, you brought up a, a pretty good point, um, uh, which is good advice to anybody who wants to start a business. Business, uh, and it was certainly guidelines that we followed. Uh, we started with SCORE. And, um, we really and I'm a SCORE member. <laughs> <so>. <laughs> exactly, um, which, which brings me to, uh, to exactly that. Um, but to your point about you know, talking to other mm -hmm. uh, folks that want to start a business, um, you have to put in the time and energy to do this right. and to do it right. Um, so anybody who wants to come in and put a few bullet points down, uh, to get started, it's, it's not going to do it. I can tell, um, I can tell the audience. I spent um, two months putting our business plan together. Um, we we didn't take this lightly. We come in here and we're going to spend a lot of money uh, to put in a a business that is, uh, by and large, it's unusual. Um, if yeah. you're talking about you know new operations and new businesses, you know we're a little bit different in that aspect, but. You have to do your homework, um, and you have to put together a, a good business plan. I think that's where we are today, um, because we took a lot of time and energy, did a lot of market research, um, used our resources. We used Score, um, got some some help from Score, um, and then as far as. Um, other resources that you were talking about. We started with the Chamber of Commerce. Um, so we started working with the Chamber of Commerce um, in terms of uh, help and resources and financing and funding opportunities. Uh, so we started there. Uh, we also worked with uh, Reggie. 
which is the Regional Economic Growth Initiative. Yes, it is. I believe, yeah. Uh, which was, um, which specifically we worked with Rick Bakovka. Um, Rick was uh, very, very, very helpful. Um, he's been a big uh, part of this community, as I understand it, for a long time, mm -hmm. and um, he was he was super helpful with uh, bringing together resources and folks that we could talk to, um, getting getting to know the community uh, better, trying to gauge some interest in the community for what we're talking about mm -hmm. here, and then of course the the village of Port Edwards. Um, in, a, mm -hmm. in a way, we're a partner with them because we used um, what's called a, a tax increment district. So it's a great program that lets you, um, that provides um, financing for a new business and, um, uh, and it's based on, I won't get into the whole details, um, but you know, basically as the business grows and you start uh, developing, you know, there's new taxes on your, on your, uh, on your uh, business, uh, and then the money goes back, mm -hmm. and then somebody else can use it, another business can use it. Right. So, so it's a great concept. So it's very much a win-win-win situation because you're, yeah. you're, generally speaking, isn't it generally that you're, you're developing properties that are, that are not even they are not providing any tax revenue for uh, yes for the area. yeah they're, they're um uh, they're dilapidated mm -hmm. um or um uh, they're just uh, maybe they're not dilapidated but they're just kind of sitting there not just collecting mm -hmm. yeah so it's an incentive for businesses to, to businesses to come in and uh to set up shop to get some help and um and so it, it worked perfectly for us i mean it's one of the reasons we're here so it's very much uh, so we're very much part of the community um, from that aspect with the village of Port Edwards. Excellent. So those are all great resources that we used um, and you know we probably uh, wouldn't be here without without all that help. And as you evolve and grow you might want to go to WEDIC which is Wisconsin Economic Development Corporation. It's yes. A, I'm sure you know about that it's a semi-private public uh, group and that may also um, lead you to WIDA, Wisconsin Housing and Economic Development Authority. Okay. And they do 50% um, of your loan as a guaranteed loan. They usually can, maybe not often, but they can piggyback with an SBA loan. Oh, I see. And, okay. and those are two guaranteed loans, one from the state, one from the federal and uh, lessens the risk if you go to a regular banking financial institution. I see. Uh, so those are things that you might want to pop in the back of your mind sure. to see if that would be available to you. No. Could you tell us a, just a little bit about the, some that we may know about data centers that we don't think about as data centers? Sure. I mean, if you um, if you think about, I'll, I'll give you a kind of a good example. If you do a Google search, when you do a Google search, that information is stored on servers in a data center somewhere. Now, you know, we don't know. Google's got data centers all over the place, mm -hmm. right? Um, Amazon, I would imagine. Sure, Amazon, uh, Microsoft. Uh, Google, Facebook, yeah. um, these companies build massive data centers. You know, they've got millions of square feet. Um, I just actually did a blog post, um, it's on our website right now, about public data center, or public cloud, using public cloud versus using a private data center. And there's a number of different things that you have to think about because using public cloud like Google, right, or Amazon or, or Microsoft, they have solutions that make sense for your business, for a business, right? It just depends on what your situation is, um, what industry you are in, and, and it it makes sense. It certainly can, but there are things that are there are differences that a company should think about uh, if you're doing that. So if you're going to use Google, right? They've got the product called the G Suite, right, or Google Drive, mm -hmm. free, right? So there's there's some things you got to think about. Um, where is your information? If, you, if you're using the public cloud as opposed to a data center, you don't know where your data is going. Mm -hmm. right. Okay. So if you're a business, is, if you're a business that really cares about that for whatever reason that is, um, that's something you got to think about. Mm -hmm. Along those lines, um, there's uh, something called data sovereignty, and data sovereignty says basically that your data, wherever it lives, is going to be subject to the laws of that place. 
So if you happen to be, if your data happens to be stored overseas, for example, uh, for whatever reason, if you're using a data center or a service, um, there are, could be implications to that data to that data residing in data centers that are overseas. Mm -hmm. So that's where data sovereignty comes in. Um, connectivity and if it can be passed with the laws of that country. They'd be subject to those laws. Of China. Yeah, sure. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, uh, and and to you know maybe a mechanic shop or um, you know a small business uh, manufacturing business or whatever mm -hmm. that might not be that big of a deal. But if you're storing credit cards, if you're a financial institution or accounting institution or something like that, that might, that might be something that you're legitimately concerned about and, yeah. and should be. And just being aware of that, you know? So, um, yeah, so, you know, to, the point, to your point earlier, um, if you're exploring um, using public cloud like a Google or an Amazon, I would encourage folks to even uh, explore a private data center too. If you really want to know sort of where your data is going to, where it's going to be, mm -hmm. uh, you could actually get to it physically access it, mm -hmm. um, as well. You're not going to get to that information um, if you needed to, uh, right? If you're in, a, uh, in the public cloud using Google, you're probably not going to be able to access their data center out in California somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, and then uh, probably, I think there's a number of factors we talked about. Probably the biggest thing is, um, is trust too. So. Our goal is to build trust in the community, right? Getting to know the local community. We're here. You can see us. You can talk mm -hmm. to us. Um, we can work with you um, for a custom solution if you need to be. Um, and then one other thing I kind of wanted to mention too is, and this caters to um, your your smaller businesses. Um, you know, I don't want to kind of put them in a box, but say five, ten employees, right? They may have a server that they run their business on. Um, well, there's there's still businesses out there that run on what's called a tower server, right? Right. It's kind of like our computers at home, the big desktop servers that sit on your desk. Um, there's still plenty of uh, businesses that have tower servers. They're not the small, skinny rack ones that go in a cabinet. So we've allotted some space in the back of the, the data center to accommodate those um, tower servers. So if you're a small business and um, and I've seen this before, you you may walk in and uh, the server's sitting down on the floor and it's on carpet and it's right next to the secretary's desk and she puts her cup of coffee right there on the edge of her desk every morning, mm -hmm. right? So you can imagine how vulnerable that thing is. <laughs> uh, and then the, the folks that come through to clean the office uh, have their vacuum. Mm -hmm. They're running their vacuum on the carpet which generates static, static electricity, electricity, right? So lots of uh, <laughs> uh, lots of bad practices right there that could <laughs> that could get ugly pretty quick. I would not like you to see my office because there is no room to put that in. Place. <laughs> <laughs> well, and, and that's and that's kind of uh, one of the things that we had factored in is, you know, for example, I think I think our co-location for tower service is seventy nine dollars a month, mm -hmm. and so for twenty bucks a week. You can get that server out of your office, put it in our data center. We've got racks, so we got space. So you're not going to pay a whole lot because you're not taking up space in these cabinets. So, and so, Jamie, that's, that's excellent information that you provided for 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 small business people here, for our viewers, as well, our general viewing audience as well. Yeah. If you could just give them a brief rundown of who you are, the, you know, your company, and the services you provide, and how they can contact you. Sure, sure. Um, so um, we are uh, Cyber One Data, and we are a uh, private data center. We're here in the central Wisconsin region, and um, we provide um, four really core business services that I like to sort of segment. Um, um, that we talked about earlier. Uh, our website is cyberonedata.com, C-Y-B-E-R-O-N-E-D-A-T-A.com. Uh, we're on the social media channels as well. And um, you can also uh, give us a call. It's 715-887-3680. Uh, well, thank you, Jamie, for joining us. This thank has you. been a, an information thank you for having me. session yeah, of, of this, this program, so we appreciate you stopping by and telling us about Cyber One. And so did you have any additional comments to add? Kurt? No, I think it's wonderful that you located in central Wisconsin. We are so glad that you're here. 
Great to be here. I, I appreciate your time today. So thank you for joining us for this latest edition of Community Business Matters. On behalf of my co-host, Carla Link, thank you. and our guest, Jamie Michael of CyberOne Data, we look forward to visiting with you next week. Take care.